When I was growing up in England in the 1970s and throughout the 80s in particular, there was an almost palpable fear that a nuclear exchange could break out between the superpowers at almost any time. It caused me and many others around at the time to wonder if there was a way to stop a missile attack. But to be honest, there was very little you could do. If you lived in a big city or near a military base, there was nothing to stop an ICBM or an intercontinental ballistic missile once it was on its way. And with the four minute warning we had here in the UK, you might as well just have one last game of missile command and hope for a quick end. Roll on 35 plus years and although we now live in a time where the threat from nuclear attack is much less, it's still present, even if it may have moved to a different area of the globe. So with the advancement of technology, can we stop a missile attack now once it's started? Ever since the first missiles were developed by the Germans in the latter part of the Second World War, they have struck fear into the hearts of many, certainly those in the vicinity of the receiving end. The primary reason for this is the way they deliver their payload. Unlike planes or cruise missiles, which by comparison are quite slow and travel normally at subsonic speeds, leaving them susceptible to anti-aircraft fire or surface-to-air missiles, an ICBM is usually launched high above the atmosphere into space, where the warhead then separates from the main body and it falls back to Earth. Because of the ballistic trajectory, the speed of these warheads, even when they come through the denser atmosphere, is still in the region of 15 to 20,000 miles an hour, 24 to 31,000 kilometers an hour, up to five miles or 8.6 kilometers per second, around Mach 25. It's this speed which makes them so difficult to stop because everything happens so fast. The detection of an attack the coordination of countermeasures and the launch of any defensive options has to happen within minutes and is one of the most difficult technical and engineering challenges around. And that's without the attacker's countermeasures, which we'll come to later. In order to look at stopping a missile, we have to find its vulnerabilities. And for that, we have to understand its trajectory phase, which is made up of three parts. The first part is the boost phase. This is when it's launching and accelerating up to space and lasts around four minutes, taking the missile to a height of around 90 to 125 miles or around 150 to 200 kilometers. Then there is the second mid-course phase. This is where the boost engines burn out and it travels through space and through the highest point of its trajectory. This is also the longest phase, taking around 20 minutes. The third and final phase is the terminal phase. This is where the warhead re-enters the atmosphere and falls towards its target. This is also the shortest and lasts around 30 seconds to one minute. Before anything can be done, you have to detect when a launch has happened. Today, we have satellites with infrared sensors. These are constantly on the lookout for the telltale heat plume from the rocket engines. Before the advent of the detection satellites, the only way to know a launch had occurred was from early warning radar posts detecting that an object had risen quickly above a certain altitude. It's this first boost phase when the missiles are at their most vulnerable and ironically, their most difficult to get at. Although they are quite slow moving to start with, they accelerate extremely rapidly. To shoot down a missile, you need another even faster missile. The problem here is that they could be deep within enemy territory on mobile launchers or even at sea launched from ships or submarines or too far away from ABMs. Other types of weapons such as high power airborne lasers can shoot down missiles, but they have to be relatively close because the atmosphere diffuses the laser beam over longer distances, making it ineffective. You also have to have these airborne lasers in the air all the time or cruising close to the known launch positions or national borders, something which would raise tensions even more. If you can't hit the missile when it's in its boost phase, then the second mid-course phase when it's in space is the next best place to attack. This is the longest phase, lasting up to 20 minutes, but it's here that the ICBM can fight back with countermeasures. Many ICBMs can hold more than one warhead. International treaties limit it to 10, yes, 10 separately targeted warheads, but that's not all. To confuse the defender's detection and tracking systems, the missile will also carry decoys. Mylar balloons, which will inflate when the warheads detach. These float along with the missile debris and the warheads and often are shaped and painted to look like warheads. To the defender's radar systems, these all look like potential targets. 
at which ones do you go for? With a limited number of ABMs available, pick the wrong ones and you will be letting the real warheads through. There have been several attempts to make systems that try to destroy the missiles when they're in space. The most famous was Reagan's Star Wars or the Strategic Defense Initiative. This was to build a space-based defense system using high-powered lasers to disable multiple targets before they fell back to Earth. The technology, on the other hand, was not capable of delivering this during the 80s, and to be honest, it's only really started to become practical now. The method which has been proven to work, although on a limited scale and against a limited number of targets, just normally one at a time so far, is the Kinetic Impact or Kill Vehicle. These are small, non-explosive devices that weigh around 4 kilos or 10 pounds that are launched into space on an ABM to intercept the incoming targets. These are released once in space and have onboard navigation thrusters so they can be guided to crash into the oncoming warheads or decoys. In the mid-2000s, this idea was expanded with the MKV or Multiple Kill Vehicle. The Defender's carrier missiles would hold a number of these, maybe a dozen or so, and once released, they would effectively form a cloud that, in theory, would target all the potential targets, both real and decoy. But this is still an extremely difficult operation to pull off, as the missile detection systems have to use high-resolution X-band radar and advanced image recognition to be able to identify all the potential targets and weed out the warheads from the missile debris and the decoys. It then sends what it thinks are the real target coordinates to the MKV's own tracking system for the final lock, all whilst the MKV and the target have a closing speed of more than 30,000 kilometers or 18,000 miles an hour. The other problem here is the number of potential targets. It's extremely unlikely that just one ICBM will be launched. In a real attack, Dozens of ICBMs will be launched and arrive in waves from different launch locations, each with multiple warheads and decoys. This would just simply overwhelm any defense system. Even if it was a limited attack, the attacker has probably to get only maybe 20% of the warheads through, but the defender has to shoot down 100%, something that in real life with current technology would be virtually impossible. If this fails, then there is just the final terminal phase, but this is very short, typically under a minute, and the velocity of the warheads is still in a 5 miles or 8 kilometers per second range. Early defense systems used nuclear-tipped missiles, which would explode near the approaching warheads in an attempt to knock out their guidance and arming electronics with an electromagnetic pulse. But with newer radiation-hardened control electronics, and the side effects of dozens of Hiroshima-sized high-altitude airbursts above your own territory, the idea was dropped. This means that the area being targeted, such as a city, command center, missile silo, or even a flotilla of ships, must have ABMs very close. For undefended areas, there would be simply too little time for an ABM to intercept a warhead before it detonated. Again, these systems are either kinetic weapons which have to hit the target or have proximity fuses and detonate close to the target. Current systems can launch at multiple targets and in tests have worked, but none have been proven in a real world attack. In the end, we just still cannot defend against an all out attack. So we have to fall back on the 60 year old policy of the appropriately named MAD, M-A-D, mutually assured destruction in order to keep the peace by making nuclear war just not worth the consequences for either side. As Churchill said, meeting to jaw jaw is better than war. So as always, thanks for watching. But before I go, I would just like to remind you of the Curious Droid merchandise store and also the Curious Droid Facebook group, which is now open where you can suggest ideas for new videos. And finally, you can now translate any of the Curious Droid videos if you are a non-English speaker with the community contributions, which we also have a video on if you're unsure, just check in the uploaded videos. So again, thanks for watching and please subscribe, rate and share.